the best characters in wrestling are personalities just turned way up. If that's true, then this man must be the angriest vegan on the face of the planet. It was 2018 and Daniel Bryan made his in-ring return after two years away. He returned in the very same arena where he had his greatest triumph and I don't think I'd be wrong in calling what happened a bust. Aside from the initial hype of him returning, there wasn't anything going on for him. And then everything changed, because Daniel Bryan gave us a very short yet very entertaining run as the planet's champion, where instead of being this underdog babyface that the fans loved, he instead gave audiences a dynamic that, if you really look at it, shouldn't have worked. But it did. A guy using his environmentalism as the root for his evil and basing his whole persona around that. AJ Styles had been holding the WWE Championship for 371 days and Daniel Bryan after failing in a WWE title match a few weeks beforehand got another shot. And uh, 2018 was not kind to AJ Styles lower extremities. Brian in a shock move gave AJ Styles a one swift kick to the Georgia Bulldogs and Daniel Bryan was your new WWE Champion. The new Daniel Bryan was born and for the first time in a long time he was a bad guy. It's also important to remember that in his initial run with the WWE, even when he got to the top and became the world champion, he never really had a sustained run with the championships. Injuries would always prevent larger runs and they always ended prematurely. Next up for him was Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series and this match was a masterpiece and for many it was a dream match. What made this contest so fun was how they told the story, champion versus champion. Brian tried everything to avoid Lesnar, then he just got steamrolled until the ref got knocked out. If you've watched a Roman Reigns match, you know exactly how this goes. Low blow to Lesnar and when Daniel Bryan hit that knee on Lesnar, it was one of the most hype near falls you'll ever see. When the night came to an end, it was Brock Lesnar who had his hand raised in victory, nonetheless one of the best matches of 2018. It's funny how before Survivor Series 2017 and 2018, both the Lesnar matches were supposed to be different and we got a fresh champion going in, regardless, back to back bangers. Brian continued his rivalry with AJ Styles as the two were going to wrestle at TLC and Brian in his promos now started to talk in the third person and it was brilliant. He cut this awesome promo where he talked about how he committed an act of betrayal. He said that he didn't need the people and instead of saying yes, 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 it was fickle, fickle, fickle. Saying that the Brian that they once loved was dead. So was the yes movement. And the way he delivered this gave you Chris Jericho vibes. You guys remember when he used to come out with a slow cadence and just call everyone a hypocrite? This was the exact same. I remember people at the time saying that they didn't like this and that it made no sense, but I feel like he proved everyone wrong. Next week, Brian came out on Miz TV against the man who he hated for the longest time, telling the fans that he just doesn't care anymore, saying that the fans pollute the earth every day, that he kicked one dude in the nuts one day, but they ruined the environment every day. The next week, this man comes out shitting on the fans and calling them parasites. Then out comes Mustafa Ali and Brian's like, what type of car do you drive? And Ali's like, an SUV. And Brian goes, you're a small, small little man. Why would you need to drive an SUV? As Ali is responding that he's got a family and all these things, Brian slaps him in the face and just goes, oh, ignorant. What Daniel Bryan was able to do in these promos was he used a previous iteration of his character and he spun it perfectly. He talked about how these people didn't really care about him but were living vicariously through his success. That he's now seen clearly. He can see everything. The story of a man fighting for the fans, now escaping that to fight for himself. He was even able to get Brian Sucks chance. That's how well he was doing. At TLC, Brian and Styles had a great match, a match that slowly built up and ended with a small package. On a TLC show that wasn't the greatest, this really stood out. Some people say it's a lot better than what it is. It's good, it's not classic caliber, but it delivered. After TLC, Brian cut a promo talking about how even his merch was secondhand and that everything was superficial, that everything was fake, just like the sweaters the interviewers were wearing, just like the merch all the fans bought. The SmackDown after TLC, Ali pinned Brian in a tag team match, but the AJ rivalry continued. Vince McMahon asked where the real AJ Styles was and then slapped him, saying to show him the animal that was inside of him. Styles then slapped Vince, showing that he's got that dog in him. So we were headed to one more match at the Rumble, but beforehand, Brian was at the concession stands, basically calling everyone fat, talking about his merch and plastic and sugar and how it's bad for you, saying that the fans filled their empty void with hot dogs and pop, calling the fans 
fans weak and impotent. Brian said that the masses were in the wrong. His promo ability and ability to make something out of nothing was just special and most people probably wouldn't have been able to pull that off. The next week it was AJ Styles who was at the concession stands and he was giving out merch which eventually led to a brawl between these two. On the show before the rumble we got a face to face mediated by Vince McMahon. You guys know that Kofi Mania came after this, it's almost perfect that Vince McMahon was already involved in this storyline. As for Daniel Bryan, this dude was angry at the clouds ripping, ripping into Vince McMahon about how he was a parasite, how he took profits over the people and the planet. How was it that someone who did that got bowed down to, but when he tried to do the same thing, he wasn't given that respect. This man was about to pop a blood vessel because he was yelling that hard. A corrupted man with corrupted morals, this was gold. Also, it's kind of ironic that the guy who thinks the Earth is flat is going against the planet's champion. Hey, AJ, do you want to talk about how you think the Earth is flat? Do you want to talk about how your feet are flat? They are flat. <laughs> but, like, he legitimately it, thinks the Earth is I flat. I do not think the world is flat. I'm just saying there's some stuff about it. He's, a flat, he's a flat Earther. At the Rumble, Brian won again and added Eric Rowan as his heavy. Their match at the Rumble wasn't as strong as their previous encounters. It felt like a gear was missing from this match and it just lacked something that you'd expect given the two in the match. That was the end of the two's one-on-one -on -one rivalry, at least in this run. On the next SmackDown, Brian said that the W wasn't just for him, it was for the planet. Talked about the title on his shoulder and said that this was bound to the skin of a cow named Daisy, and he threw the championship into the garbage, unveiling what he called the new symbol of excellence. Look at this thing. What is that? After this, out came Samoa Joe and he told everyone that he's going to put a champion to sleep, defang the Viper, told Hardy to be quiet and act like this was an AA meeting and shut up while he's sharing with the group. Mustafa is a boy among men and AJ, how's our girl Wendy doing? A brawl ensues and Triple H appears to tell Brian that he's going to face everyone at the Elimination Chamber. Mustafa Ali couldn't compete in the match because he was injured, but as one door closes, another opens and that was for Kofi Kingston, the man who'd gone 11 years without competing for the WWE title. The man who was just a good company guy and did whatever was asked of him. Kofi was replacing Ali and with the Chamber match just days away, everyone participated in a gauntlet match. Kofi eliminated Daniel Bryan, he went through everyone except for Randy Orton and AJ Styles, had a breakout performance in this match, but I think a lot of us thought that this would be it. This Chamber match though was stacked. AJ, Joe, Bryan, Kofi, Randy, Hardy, Kofi made it into the final two with a great performance, lost the match but he gained everyone's respect. The crowd was chanting for Kofi and something new was born. Brian was still a WWE champion, but Kofi Mania had taken over. Seriously, you can't write this stuff. On one end was the guy who had an organic rise because of the fans. Now that same man turned his back on the ones that made him, and it was someone new assuming that underdog role. On the next SmackDown, Brian was pinned by Kofi in a tag team match. Shane came out and gave Kofi another shot at the title at Fastlane, and now we were on the road to WrestleMania 35. Kofi's organic rise was awesome. Eventually, right before Kofi was about to sign the contract, out comes Vince to replace him with Kevin Owens. Look how sad everyone looks. The Kofi story was put on the back burner for now and it was instead Brian and KO at Fastlane. Brian was out here saying that Owens has nothing in the first place, he's got nothing to lose, but when he loses, the planet loses and he just can't let that happen. That he went from fighting someone who threw pancakes to the guy who eats them. Owens comes out and he's like, yeah, for an educated dude, you sure do love your fat jokes. KO guaranteed that he'd win the WWE title at Fastlane, and at Fastlane, it was Kofi who had a meeting with Mr. McMahon. The New Day told him to do the right thing and give Kofi the WWE title match. So he made this official and the New Day was banned from the match. But this turned out to be a two-on-one beatdown on Kofi by the bar. The WWE title match was still a triple threat match, but instead the addition was Mustafa Ali. Brian retained in a fun match. Now we were on the road to WrestleMania 35 and it was supposed to be Kevin Owens versus Daniel Bryan for the WWE title, but the fans just wanted Kofi in that position so bad that they had no other choice than to make that move. I've already talked about Kofi Mania in another video, so I'm not going to get too, too deep into it. The irony here was that Vince said to Kofi exactly what he was saying to Brian back in 2014, that he was a B-plus player, just wasn't good enough to be the WWE champion, saying that he was only good because of Big E and Xavier Woods. 
Kofi told everyone that for 11 years he's never complained, he's done everything that was asked of him. He was put in a gauntlet match and if he won he'd be going to Wrestlemania. He got through everyone but he couldn't get past Daniel Bryan. The New Day then went to Vince and they're like okay you gotta stop screwing over Kofi. They were watching the man who they considered a hero get consistently cast aside. Out comes Daniel Bryan and he's like yeah Vince let the New Day quit. We'll call up three guys from NXT, call them fresh afternoon and it'll be a more successful faction because Kofi won't be there. Brian's telling everyone that he agrees with Vince that Kofi's a B-plus player, the same guy who wanted to shave his hair and beard off because he didn't fit a corporate image of what a top guy was, was now in the opposite role. Awesome. I can't understate how well he played that role. It's because you knew that it happened previously, which made it even better. So Vince said that Kofi was a B-plus performer, but was the New Day a B-plus tag team? They had the chance to win Kofi his match at WrestleMania. And they did. Big up to the Usos, that moment was beautiful. On the final SmackDown before Mania, both guys went face to face and Bryan told the fans not to be complacent, not to be like Kofi. At the core of it, Daniel Bryan was the perfect guy for Kofi to overcome. And Bryan did so much to get Kofi over constantly, just belittling him, knocking him down, undervaluing him, making the fans keep guessing. Does Kofi do it or is it all for naught? But now it was the moment of truth. Kofi vs. Brian, WWE Championship, the crowd wanted this more than anything. Right in the middle of the show, heel vs. babyface. Daniel Bryan was in the ring, so you knew you were going to get a strong match, and that's exactly what we got. Some close falls with Bryan hitting a running knee. It looked like at points that hope was fading, but in the end, after a trouble in paradise, Kofi did it. What a moment, and Daniel Bryan, again, has to get the respect for what he was able to do from earlier in the year. You always want to see the bad guy get what's coming to them and that's what made Kofi Mania work. For Brian, his run was done here. He had a run with Rowan where he captured the tag team titles and didn't change the design of those championships for some reason. And by the fall of this year, he was good guy Daniel Bryan again facing off against The Fiend. Good or bad? This was good. This proved that Daniel Bryan has great range not only as a professional wrestler but as a character. Chop it all down. Actually, maybe don't chop stuff down. That's what he was telling us not to do. Let me rephrase. At the core of it all, what this was was something on paper. Maybe don't talk about paper. He probably doesn't like that too. What this was was something that probably shouldn't have worked. Think about how goofy this actually is. A guy using his environmentalism as his character. That's some ruthless aggression 2005 filler character nonsense right there. But Daniel Bryan proved that this was a stroke of genius. Going around and just spewing nonsense to people to make people believe his message. Now, do I wish the run was longer? Yes. But the more I thought about it, maybe it was perfect. It did exactly what it was supposed to do and that was get Daniel Bryan back on track. He himself said that this is the most fun he's had and he was happy to lose the title to Kofi because it just made sense. I can't put into words the work this man was doing, especially at a time where things weren't that hot for the company. He made Kofi, he gave us great promos, he gave us great matches, and he played a key part in one of the most authentic WWE stories ever told. I mean, what more could you ask for? If you ask me, Daniel Bryan's Planet's Champion run can only be described as all hits, no misses. See you guys. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Uh, what is your favorite burger topping? I don't eat burgers. <laughs> I'm a vegan. Do you know how many animals, how many of your fellow Earthlings have suffered for this? Shame! <laughs>